Hey guys, I was just doing a little cleaning under the hood here and I just thought, hey, why not just point at some random parts and tell people what they are in case they don't know. So I'll start right here. Um, if you follow this box here, you'll see that it leads to a hose that leads down to what is called the throttle body. When you step on your gas pedal, it actually causes this little valve in here to open up and allow air to enter the engine, right? And then the computer adjusts how much fuel enters with the air and uh, air and fuel enters the engine and it accelerates, right? And if you follow this hose right here, let me pop it open here, is the air filter box. You'll see there's the air filter, right? So air comes through the filter. And if you follow, there's like a little air intake here. So it goes in this hole, through this plastic, through the filter, through this hose, through the throttle body. And then there's something called IMRC valves, which uh, for general knowledge aren't super important. And then into the intake manifold and then into the cylinders. So fuel enters through there. And if you look right here, this silver part, that's the fuel rail. So this line goes all the way back to the fuel pump and the uh, fuel pressure regulator. This fuel rail stays pressurized to the prescribed pressure. I think it's around 55 PSI for this car. And then these little wires connect to the fuel injectors and they just pulse the injector open and allow fuel to go from the rail into the cylinder along with the air. That's uh, how fuel and air gets in there, right? And then if you look right here, these little black pieces are actually called, uh, oh, give me a second. <laughs> Um, holy crap. Sorry, I had a little brain fart and I had to think of the word. They're the ignition coils. Basically, what these do is um, they step up the voltage from the batteries, 12 volt, all the way up to, I think, around 20,000 volts actually, so that the spark plug can spark. You see, at 12 volts, the spark plug will not successfully spark because the, air, the voltage is not high enough for the power to pass through the air gap because the air has resistance that 12 volts can't cross. So the ignition coils step the voltage up so that way the spark plugs have enough voltage to actually function correctly. Which brings us to the spark plugs, which are inside the cylinder. They'd be down below this part. You can't see them right now. But they just sit in the engine and whenever a cylinder is ready to ignite the air-fuel ratio, they just generate a spark and that's what ignites the fuel, right? Over here is some people call it the ECU for engine control unit, uh, or they'll just say the computer. Um, it has, actually contains uh, several modules on my particular, the engine control module, um, the transmission control module, and one other I can't think of off the top of my head. I believe it's electronic control module or something along the line. Just know if they're talking about your computer, this is the part they're talking about. It's usually pretty recognizable by these fins. They're actually meant to help keep it cool, and uh, it'll have a shit ton of wires going to it. And then here is actually the reservoir for the brake fluid. And this is the master brake cylinder, right? And uh, basically what happens when you step on the pedal, it actually lets this vacuum booster here push this lever in, which generates pressure, which travels down these lines and actuates the uh, pistons on the uh, brake calipers, right? So that's what generally controls your brakes right there. Um, let's see. This is the uh, power steering reservoir. You'll see it says power steering fluid only on it and it'll have some lines that run down to your power steering pump so that's how i can identify that here's my power steering pump right here because it's connected to the power steering reservoir so that uses hydraulics to turn your wheels whichever way right for those of you who don't know at the very front of the car connect to these fans i bet you that guy never tows anything with this truck at the very front of the car connected to these fans is the radiator so these are the radiator fans Generally, they have a dual purpose of cooling the engine's coolant, which is the fluid that goes to the radiator, and cooling the air conditioner condenser. So basically, the radiator uh, circulates a liquid that goes through the engine and absorbs heat from the engine, comes back to the radiator where it can dissipate heat into the atmosphere, right? And these fans help it when you're sitting still. They generate enough wind to keep pulling air, out, uh, air through and keep dissipating heat. And um, I guess that brings us to the AC condenser. You can't see it from here. Uh, let's see. That's actually it at the front. You might think you're looking at a radiator, but you're actually looking at an AC condenser on my car. That's what's further to the front. And basically, um, the heated Freon that has absorbed heat from inside the car's cabin comes here to dissipate that heat. And just like the radiator, it dissipates it into the surrounding air. Let's see. Uh, if you look down there, let me zoom in a little for you. <laughs> Oop, I'm excuse me, I have the hiccups. 
you can't really see but you can see this is the alternator it has copper coils inside of it that's how it's that's the giveaway for where the alternator is it'll have copper inside of it that you can see and basically there's a magnet inside the copper that spins whenever the engine is running and that's how it generates electricity um, generally if you're having a uh, low uh, your battery dies while you're driving you can usually blame the alternator but it does generate all the electricity used to operate the vehicle while it's running uh, some people uh, mistakenly believe that the car's battery can store enough power to operate the car for years at a time but no it cannot um, it can usually only store enough power to operate the car for maybe an hour at best usually less and the alternator is actually what keeps it charged up um, let's see here let's look around with some other good stuff to point out uh, oh down there is the AC compressor and it's easy to tell it's the AC compressor because it has lines that run to the condenser and they have fittings so you can uh, recharge Freon and whatnot. All that does is uh, drive the refrigeration cycle, compressing the Freon to actually make it hotter so that it can dissipate more heat when it hits the condenser. And then later on it'll decompress and become cold in the evaporator coils which are inside the car. That's a whole subject all on its own so I'm not going to go too crazy. And then back here you look at these hoses. Those are actually the hoses to the heater core. So the heater core is actually... I guess you could say aft or behind that um, and basically it just takes the hot coolant that's running through and cooling the engine remember because that liquid is actually very hot and it actually uses it to make your heater hot so it's like a tiny radiator inside your car that instead dissipates heat into the cabin so you can be warm uh, let's see let's look for some other goodies <laughs> that should have a cap on it please don't judge me uh, and that's, that's a good amount of stuff to learn. If you can learn all that, that's pretty good. Oh, here's your expansion tank. Basically, um, as your coolant heats up, as the engine runs, um, it'll actually expand. And since this is the radiator is supposed to be 100% full, this tank gives the liquid somewhere to go so it doesn't burst the hose off. It actually mines a little low. I need to top it off, but don't judge me.